Hey guys, how's it? It's Alex from Tandem RC, and today we're going to be starting a cool little project with my slash 4x4 here, as you can see. And yeah, I got all the parts right here off to the side. It's going to be pretty fun. We're going to be making a snowplow. Now, I don't really have the correct body for a snowplow, as you guys can see. It's a Proline 14RS rally body. It's had its beatings there, as you can see. It's got a little bit of cracks on the side. This whole hitch area back here is messed up and I had to do some shoe gluing on the back to get the body post right. And yeah, it's been through a lot of wear and tear over like two or three years, so it's pretty messed up. But, um, I'm going to be ordering in a true scale SVT Raptor body from Proline in the next few days, so hopefully I'll get here within a week. So this video is going to take over the course of about a week. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be making a few videos for this project. Today is just going to be kind of like the bulk of the manufacturing of the plow, and then um, other ones are just going to be add-ons. Like here, I went to Home Depot, and I bought a few things. I bought this, um, I don't know what you could call it, maybe caution tape. It's a little bit reflective and metallic, so it looks pretty cool. And then I bought some uh, reflective safety tape that we can cut in strips and put on the sides of the plow to make it look nice. Then also... I need to buy a few, ho um, not hobby shops, <laughs> I need to buy a few um, wire harnesses from the hobby shop. I'm not going to buy the whole hobby shop, even though I'd like to do that. Um, so we got to get some wire harnesses, because I also want to hook up some LEDs onto the plow, which will be pretty fun. And I'm going to pretty soon get an 8-channel receiver and a mod for my Fly Sky Radio, as you guys can see here, to do 8 channels, which will be really nice. And then we'll, for the plow, we'll be using this 3rd channel button, as you guys can see right here. Hopefully my camera will auto focus. It's my phone right now, so I don't really have a great camera. Um, the other guy on our channel, Andrew, um, does have a good camera. He's got a Galaxy Note 4, and that's got a great camera on it. So we could be using that, but I really do want to get a pretty good camera pretty soon. Um, and my other friend Trevor also does have a pretty good uh, camera. But to stop babbling, I want to tell you one last thing about that doesn't really pertain to this video, and that is like the whole front end of my truck right now. As you can see, my steering is pretty straight right now, but the tires are not. So, and that's because I was messing around. Me and Andrew were driving it, and we kept hitting it into curbs. And also, I went racing this weekend, so it's kind of messed up. And I just realized, <laughs> you could just look at the A-arms. That's why it's all messed up. And I think I also bent the turnbuckles a little bit. So, my faith is, like, it, it was never lost, but it's been restored in RPM. Look at that. They're not even broken. It's amazing. Look at that. Those pin they just popped right off the brace. I don't even know how the hell that happened. It's insane. I can't even just comprehend how that happened. But that's why I have all that slop and the weird dangliness in the suspension right now. Um, so yeah, that's that. Let's get on to the next portion of the video. Okay, so I got this used, R or not RPM, used stock slash 4x4 um, a arm right here and I've broken it here where the RPM one that I showed you hasn't broken let me auto focus um, yeah so I'm gonna use this I'm just gonna cut it off a little bit so yeah let's get to it Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. As you can see, I got a nice cut on here. I don't even think I have to go over it with the Dremel. Come on, focus. There we go. And it looks pretty nice. I don't think I have to go over it, over it with the Dremel at all. Let me just see if I can smoothen it out. Actually, I was just moving wires, and my Dremel is on top of my sub or my Dremel wire is right under my subwoofer, so that's not going to work for now. Um, but basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this lock sand that you guys can see right there. It's not very thick, it's probably only an eighth of an inch thick, maybe even less, maybe a tenth of an inch. But I'm going to basically fill this gap that you guys can see right there on the RPM bumper so that it could be raised up. And then I'm going to want to take this um, A-arm and kind of want to extend it like this, maybe so that we have about an inch, inch and a half of room for the plow in front of the RPM bumper like this. 
Now I'm just going to bolt it right on here. This is going to be a stationary mount. I don't really know exactly how I'm going to do it yet, but I'll figure out some kind of bracket. And once I do, I'll get back to you with that. Okay, so thank God for this protective stuff, because I got Sharpie all over the place. Um, it probably won't matter, because I think I'm going to paint it black anyway. I don't have any polycarbonate paint, um, but I have uh, automotive paint for, like, engines. So hopefully that will work, but this looks really nice. Um, it turned out pretty good. I had to dremel it a little bit, but where does it go? Like this. It fits on perfectly, so I'm just going to uh, drill this real quick, and yeah, hopefully it'll be good. Oh, I cracked it. Damn it. It definitely went a lot better this time, as you guys can see. I kind of split it. I was pushing really hard, and I wasn't being patient with it, so I was expecting this Lexan to be a lot stronger, but I guess not. So, on to the next part. Okay, so I got it pretty good here. There was a tiny little crack right there. And I'm telling you guys, this Luxan is really brittle. Nothing like the polycarbonate that's on the bodies. Um, either that or just the thicker it gets the, you know, the worse it is. Um, but, you know, it should stay pretty good. I hope I have enough threads there to go into the chassis or the bulkhead. I think I'll be okay. But now all we got to do is... You see here, I'm going to go like this, and I don't have enough room to fit it, and I want to keep it flush, so I'm going to get rid of these little pieces really quickly. So let me just do that, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, let's test it out. Man, that was really hot. It was getting my finger all messed up. <laughs> you can see I got all kinds of dust. So, yeah, I think it'll fit fine. It'll be a little bit of a squeeze. I think I'm just going to get rid of this piece right here, and we should be good. So I'll be right back.
right, there we have it. So I got the arm mounted on there. It's a tiny, tiny bit uh, crooked, which is okay. I'm just gonna Dremel off this to make it look nice. Now, like I said before, I was probably gonna I was saying I was gonna paint this. Um, the only thing is, I don't want to use any paint that's not good for this. So I think I'm gonna go to the hobby shop tomorrow or sometime soon, buy some black uh, Tamiya paint and um, scuff this thing up with some pretty fine sandpaper and then paint it. As soon as I got all these Lexan pieces done, and I'm also gonna buy some epoxy. I found a good deal at Harbor Freight for like. I don't know, like, uh, a dollar for, like, a uh, two-step epoxy, so this should be pretty good, guys. I think it's turning out pretty nicely. Let me get the bumper here. Sorry about having the light on. I have a light right above me, and then I have a light right over here um, above the workbench. So let's see how this all lines up. It should line up like this. I just hope I have enough room to go in the chassis. And that's actually perfect because it's pretty much level with the ground that way. And I think I drilled it out just perfectly so that if you could see here, the screw holes kind of fit in those little grooves on the bumper. And I think it looks really nice, guys. Let me know what you think. I also have to make the brackets here and everything, but I think I'll save that for another video. I think we've had enough for this. So I got the mount almost pretty much done. I just have to do a bracket and then... We'll start using this PVC pipe right here that I've got um, to make the plow. So thanks for watching, guys. That's the first episode of Project Snowplow. I'm sure I'm still not sure what I'm going to name it. You'll probably see in the um, in the description or not in the description in the title there. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.